G'day YouTube, welcome to my channel. During the past three months or so, I've been recording and uploading a series of GSM decoding videos showcasing some of the basic functionality of GRGSM, which is a software toolset for Linux. In part six today, we will be covering a topic that is without a doubt the hardest part of GSM decoding, and that is listening to 2G voice traffic. But first, I'll just take a moment to reiterate something. This video will not show you how to do to decrypt GSM phone calls. I'll only be showing you how to extract the voice traffic after the decryption process has been undertaken. Go and check out my GSM decryption playlist for more videos on the subject of GSM cracking and deciphering. And probably scroll down to the very bottom to find the relevant video. So let's proceed with all that being clarified, shall we? So I'm guessing most of us have seen the Hollywood movies where there are some spy operatives sitting in front of a large array of telecommunication interception equipment, computer screens, and they're wearing headphones. Maybe they're in the back of a dimly lit van with tinted windows, eavesdropping on someone's phone call in real time. This is not exactly reflective of reality, of course. The GSM Air interface, called the UM interface in the GSM technical standards, is the link between a mobile subscriber's phone and the base transceiver station, and it is remarkably complex. Simply using a radio receiver to tune into a GSM traffic channel and begin listening to voice calls is not possible. Perhaps the commercial GSM interceptor products available to governments, military and signals intelligence agencies might be able to do this, but these systems cost half a million US dollars and go into the millions of US dollars and they're not available for the public to purchase, of course. So typically a 2G downlink signal that is being transmitted from a GSM based transceiver station is received by a software defined radio and the data is recorded and stored to a file on a PC. Then the demodulation, decryption and decoding processes can be performed on the captured data at a later time after it was transmitted. We aren't going to need any additional ha hardware for this tutorial, excluding a working PC running Dragon OS Linux. For a comprehensive list of the software needed for GSM decoding, please see part one of my GRGSM decoding how-to. We do need two additional pieces of software that aren't specified in part one. The first is Wireshark, which will help us display the GSM data in a human readable format so we can analyze it. And the second is VLC Media Player because we need a media player application that has the required codecs to replay GSM voice data. So with those things said and out of the way, let's proceed to the practical segment of the video now. Inside my home directory here, I have a GSM capture file, which I recorded from my rogue 2G base transceiver station using GRGSM capture. It contains a telephone call, which I made between two smartphones at my premises. And just quickly, does everybody understand the concept of a home directory? I had somebody email me recently who had no idea what a home directory was or how the file structure of Linux worked. So your home directory is the default path, the terminal window is working within when you first open it. Unless you use the CD command to change directory, all the commands you will be running will be running inside your home directory. For example, any commands that you run in the terminal window that generate an output file, such as grgsm decode, will store 
the file inside your home directory. So to better understand where your home directory is located, please double click computer, which is an icon on your desktop. We then double click file system. We locate the home folder, double click that to enter it. And finally, this folder here, which will be titled the same as the user name of the account you are currently logged into as. My user account is always named username in Linux. So if we click that, that is our home directory. So with that minor tangent aside, let's continue with the practical segment. If you haven't already, we will need to open a terminal window. This is where we'll be running all of our grgsm decode commands. And we can either open up a second terminal window or open up a new tab in the existing terminal window like I have. And we run the following command to launch Wireshark. And enter your password if prompted. So we'll just hit enter on that. After Wireshark has launched, we will return to the first terminal window and we will decode the combined BCCH and SDCCH4 channel on time slot zero with the following command. I'm not going to explain how to use GRGSM decode. We've covered that topic many times already in, in this video series. But the fundamental differences are we, we have changed the channel mode to BCCH underscore SDCCH4, and that's about it. Because I captured this data from a Rogue 2G base station powered by Yate BTS and running on a software defined radio, it has a slightly different network configuration compared to a real GSM cellular network. Yate BTS utilizes a combined BCCH and SDCCH4 channel, which means the broadcast control channel and the standalone dedicated control channels are combined into a single logical channel on time slot zero. So I will hit enter on this command and we can see the terminal window displaying the raw GSM bursts and Wireshark is populating with human readable data for us to analyze. Once the process has completed, we will click on the info column to sort the packets, which will bring all of the immediate assignment packets to the top of the window for us to easily access. Most of these immediate assignment packets will be related to GPRS data, but at least two of them will contain information relating to the voice call being made at the time this data was captured. So we'll click the first immediate assignment in the top window pane, not double click, just click once, sorry. In the lower window pane, we will double click the GSM CCCH immediate assignment and finally, scroll down and double click on channel description. We can see here that my mobile phone has been assigned to a non-hopping TCH full rate traffic channel on time slot four. We now have all the relevant information. We need to extract the voice data from our GSM capture file and then output it to a playable audio file on our PC. Our next command is quite long also, so to save time, I'll just copy and paste it. So we are still using GR GSM decode, but there is a few fundamental differences in this command compared to the previous. We have changed the channel mode to a full rate TCH traffic channel. And we have changed the time slot to four. And we have configured the O argument 
to output the decoded GSM voice data into a file in our home directory called speech.au.gsm. So I'll proceed to hit enter on that and immediately we see the terminal window filling up with raw GSM bursts and Wireshark is populating with packets relating to the phone call taking place and a file called speech.au.gsm is created inside of our home directory. This file with the .gsm extension contains the decoded voice data originating from a single side of the phone call happening between two of my mobile phones. We can utilize VLC Media Player to replay the GSM voice traffic as it happened at the time this GSM data was captured. And I've opened the codec information window of VLC so we can just confirm that it is, that it is indeed voice data originating from a 2G base transceiver station. G'day YouTube, welcome to the VKA FOS YouTube channel. So yeah, that is really, really cool. Obviously the voice decoding workflow is going to be vastly different if you are working with a real GSM uh, with real GSM data captured from a real 2G base transceiver station. But due to the subject of intercepting phone calls being very sensitive from a legal standpoint, I've intentionally made this tutorial ambiguous because I do not want to teach my viewers how to eavesdrop on private telecommunication. All the pieces of the puzzle are documented well enough on my channel and it will be entirely up to my viewers to piece them all together. So yeah, stay tuned for part seven where I will be demonstrating how SMS messages are extracted from a GSM capture file and how they can be viewed on a PC. Thanks very much for watching, bye.